Hey guys, welcome back to MJ Gunner Podcast right here for the post-match review. Arsenal 2, Nottingham Forest 1. And what a great way to start off the season, especially in the Premier League campaign. Getting that crucial three points to, uh, you know what, to, to start the season. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, of course. Uh, it is still going to be a 20 to 25 minute, uh, minute? <laughs> minute podcast. And, well, this game... Uh, again, a lot of people were expecting us to win, and I was expecting the team to perform at their best, of course, winning the Community Shield last week. And momentum starts to generate from that moment on, but it really depends on how we play. Uh, early kickoff at 4.30 in the morning in Vancouver area or west side or west coast area in north america of course it's a pain in the ass every time when there's an early lunchtime kickoff here in canada uh i'm sure i'm sure in a lot of well it's either you stay up all night just to watch this game or you just kind of wake up early i couldn't sleep last night to be honest um I think it's one of those moments where you know you're very excited for a new season to start, and you just can't, you don't want to miss it, especially four thirty in the morning. And guess what? I slept at one thirty, woke up at three, uh, and I was like, you know what? Uh, the team sheet's gonna come out in thirty minutes. I'm gonna wait for that, and then I'll wait for an hour just for the game to start off. And realize that the e-ticket system, I believe so, in the Emirates Stadium was down, uh, leaving thousands of uh fans right outside of the stadium waiting which means that the the uh, the delay it's on pretty much for 30 minutes uh, i was a little bit pissed off about that because i could have probably gotten a little bit more sleep than just an hour and 30 minutes but mentally i am qu- quite ready for the task today wait for the game today but looking at the uh, starting lineup, uh, it was very interesting. Uh, the, of course, the most notable part of the lineup, it's gone, is Gabrielle, Big Gabby, uh, sitting on the bench today. And Rob Poding and also um, Kieran Tierney, both of them are not in the didn't travel with the squad. Ooh, I think that is, I think that's pretty much sums up the future of Kieran Taney at the moment. Um, I don't know, is it because of that slipped or that goal from Cole Palmer uh, or the attack on the right-hand side? That kind of let, you know, left them or left Arteta thinking about his whole future um, of that. I mean, technically you can possibly play Kivior in that area, but based on... Um, what happened to the last game maybe Carantini was the best fit but that one slipped or that one moment from KT was certainly uh, a moment to forget in his career especially in his late Arsenal career that's why he's not selected and well I'm sure another reason is pretty much the deal with uh, Real Sociedad at the moment I believe are I believe the deal is a fan thing at the moment so I think Arsenal was still trying to sell him permanently I'm trying to get a little bit of a cash so we can invest that money elsewhere. In terms of where that elsewhere is, I'm not quite sure, to be honest. But we will figure that out very soon. I think we still have around two weeks, two and a half weeks before the end of the season. But based on looking at the the lineup, it uh, looks like we're playing kind of four or three at the back. Um, party come, kind of dropping dropping at uh, right back area. And you Ben White, Saliba. And also, you're in Timber playing as uh, as the left back, and you have kind of um, Declan Rice playing as lone six, and then you have what Martinelli, Kai Havertz, Odegaard, Saka, and also having Eddie and Ketia up front. So in the end, in other words, the formation that we're playing it's not some sort of three, two, four, one or something. Turns out, uh, when you look closely at the um, when we look closely at the uh, the lineup, it was actually uh, three one six. So I was very doubtful in terms of how we want to approach the game. I know it's only Nottingham Forest, but at the same time, I feel like we could lose a little bit of a balance, especially in the middle when you just want party playing as a lone six. But three one six is more of a attacking formation for Arteta. 
And defensively, of course, Pyder will be dropping as you know right back, and then Declan Rice, uh, Declan Rice, uh, Kai Habs, and also Odegaard forming the uh, triangle in the middle. I think that's how it it was throughout the whole game, to be honest. But I was extremely doubtful with the uh, with the formation. Um, I don't think we have kind of seen that so far in the preseason. So especially coming off a great win against Man City in the end. Um, it was a big shock uh, seeing the formation changing from 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1 to 3-1-6 formation. But uh, it does understand, I do understand why our technical for that formation for the first 20 minutes of the game. Of course, we completely uh, dominate the whole, uh, the whole midfield, the whole game pretty much so. Uh, especially when we have control with the ball, we have quite a lot of you know pass and move and dynamics up front. Of course, we couldn't really break the deadlock, and for 20 minutes, I thought it wasn't quite working. Especially that one little moment uh, from Brandon Johnson, which I thought he could have done better in that situation. Um, I think it was I think it was a bully heading the ball right back at the Arsenal defensive line and a little bit of a switch off at the Arsenal back three, allowing Brandon Johnson to go through one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. But again, uh, a little bit of an inexperience in that area kind of caused Nottingham Forest scoring that early goal. Uh, but yeah, I think Ramsdale did pretty well in that situation coming out just to close down the angle. But honestly, it was in between Brandon Johnson and also Aaron Ramsdale. But thankfully, um, Brandon Johnson put the ball out wide for a goal kick. And later on, 25 minutes in, uh, we are getting a little glimpse of hope and also uh, a little bit of a success with the um, with the formation. And suddenly, out of nowhere, it was a corner kick coming out. I believe so. Uh, it was Martinelli starting everything, winning the ball back. He was against REA, of course, the past Tottenham Tottenham player. And he literally spun that dude all over the place throughout the whole game. But that assist was very, very impressive. I don't know if he meant it the way how he, well, let's start how he kind of kept the ball. Kept the ball very nicely. Uh, uh, of course, it was pretty much him against Ori on the left-hand side. Winning the ball back, keep the ball in possession, try and take on one on one with REA. And by the time when he tried to make a cross or trying to cut inside, a very brilliant move by him. That little, uh, that little spin uh, to the middle, the ball drops to or falls to a roll to Eddie and Ketia. Again, Eddie, it's that type of player who I think is very potent in terms of being in the six yard or 12 yard area in front of goal and Eddie got the ball very you know what he done it very nicely especially he wasn't panicking at all uh trying to skip one uh defender uh at least trying to keep the ball on his right side and literally drills that one in and wall uh Walrow, I believe so the, the the defender the captain for Nottingham Forest uh took a deflection and Matt Turner returning to the Emirates for uh, the first time after signing for Nottingham Forest, of course, making his first ever league start, Premier League start for the American. And the deflection took a big toll out of the defense. And Eddie and Ketia score our first Premier League season goal. And what, you know, just, just to hold this play was, was phenomenal. Uh, Martinelli, good dribble, good good pass, good spin, good skills, and Eddie, great finish as well. And we have taken the lead one nothing. And a few moments later, um, Bukayo Saka. Let's talk about this guy for for a bit. Again, this guy has been amazing for us last season and throughout the whole preseason as well, scoring maybe a couple of goals, I believe so. But that goal he scored. For the second one was extraordinary and this is the type of goal or this is the type of display that all the arsenal fans want to watch it's the fact that being able uh being very very dangerous right outside the box with his left foot just curls that one to far uh far left corner far corner and that play again uh, i think also shows quite a bit of um individual performances it was the corner kick coming off actually and then Saliba 
uh, got the ball back. Very, very good. Trying to body whoever was playing as left back. Saliba gives it to uh, Saka. And Saka was being muscled right behind him. But he has the muscle. He has the body strength to, to hold off that play. And first time curls that one in top left corner. And I feel bad for Matt Turner. I'm sure he faced that numerous of time in the uh in well in in the training ground and we scored a second goal it was amazing to be honest i felt like you know what new season new arsenal and it looks fantastic to be honest with the with the kit that we were wearing with the goals that we had tactics changed compared to the first game of last two seasons was phenomenal later on declan rice was playing very well declan rice martinelli in the first half was was very very good. I think both of them was they were able to trap back, uh, nick the ball off the the player who uh, not a force player who had possession with the ball. And yeah, there were so many times it happened. Of course, especially Declan Rice, he has the physique, he has the technical ability to win ball back from behind. I think it was very clever, and we're able to contain. I mean, we're able to contain on him Forest. Again, they are you can you can tell they are a team playing uh they don't play really high press plus they uh well they only play counter attack so that's why we're able to have the ball for the majority of the time I believe. So at one point we have hundred and eighty touches within the box, hundred and eight uh hundred and eighteen passes or eight, something like that compared to none them forwards, I believe they have like three or four or something like that within the box and it shows the um, technical brilliancy that we have and yeah and then later on uh you're in timber let's talk about him for a bit um throughout the whole game i think he's been he's been okay not like fantastic but every time when he put in a tackle every time when he had you know off the ball he, it's it's so nice to watch him i mean he knows where the defender uh the the Nottingham Forest player is gonna go stuck his foot out every time he wins the tackle but a little bit of a sloppiness of him uh, in the late few minutes of the first half i believe he made two very sloppy passes and the second one eventually led to in a way to his injury uh i believe he's trying to win the ball back he slid in uh to brandon johnson i believe so if, if not probably morgan gibbs white but it was a terrible tackle from uh from urine timber i know he loves to win his duel ground duel especially but i think that was a very bad tackle in general i mean he didn't get the ball but instead kind of scuff his shin a little bit and we were a little bit concerned with his you know with his health right there not quite sure how he could continue but i was like you know what i don't really want to risk him at the moment we're taking two nothing lead we can still make some changes to uh to the back four if we you know if we fancy and he you know he carried on he was limping for a second i thought he was going to be okay um half time comes and i thought he's going to be he's going to be substituted but he comes back on and within five 10 minutes something is up with his knee and it looks funny i i really i really hope he's okay because it looks like it's the knee i really hope it's not the acl or anything with the uh, mcl anything like that except especially not any of the tendon the ligament on his knee i i hope it was, oh, it was just knock i hope so but he kept posting um he kept he, he he kept posting a lot of uh or sharing a lot of pictures on instagram it looks like he might be still in a good vibe about that uh, and there's no update in terms of how he is so i was a little bit worried but i'm still actually very worried at the moment because i don't want to lose him at the moment 45 million for a player like his caliber it's a complete bargain and i'm thankful that we have him to be honest to be honest i didn't know who he was uh before he signed and right now, everybody knows. I think he's very underrated. I think he is going to be the breakout player of the season, especially being in the uh, in the in, in the Premier League environment for the first time. And hopefully, he's going to be okay. I really hope so because if he actually gets injured and he's going to be out for quite a bit, I'm sure Kieran Tierney might have to stay and provide extra coverage on the left hand side if things didn't go quite well like last season. 
Um, later on, Tom Yas is coming on. Uh, he, he he's doing great, honestly. Um, he you know he played very safe. He is very calm on the ball. But again, the the only thing that he Tom Yas can improve is pretty much his end product. Um, and there's uh, I think there was one play between him and also Martinelli on the left hand side, and yeah, uh, I think there's. Uh, well, there's another word for that. Yes, I think Tom Yasuo was playing quite conservatively, trying to keep possession with the ball, but at the same time, not sure if he's trying to gain confidence through those types of play. But I think he did fine defensively as well. And what, 60, 60, well, 70 minutes in, honestly, we've been doing the same thing. It was a little bit boring at first, it was a little bit dull. Uh, I feel like we're not going anywhere. Trossa coming on later on for, I believe it was, crap, who it was, I think Martinelli? Is it Martinelli? Or something like that. Somebody, uh, I think, well, Trossa coming on, and I thought, and I thought he looked bright again. I don't know what he needs to do in order to start, but if he's okay to become an impact player, I'm sure he will glad to play in that area because right now, Based on what Martinelli did, you don't want to drop Martinelli. And for the past two, three weeks of Trossard form, whether it's in preseason or Community Shield, you cannot drop him as well. But Trossard is definitely the first player that you look onto the bench every time when you need somebody to make an impact. And Trossard make pretty, pretty much quite of an impact despite didn't really score goals, but he when he came on it was brilliant but six uh 70 minutes in and this is where i still want i still criticize arteta quite heavily is the fact that the lack of you know the lack of dynamics at one point it was boring duel i feel like we're not quite doing anything so at that moment it it looks like we are not trying to kill the game i felt like we're not or we don't quite have that much of an opportunity to kill the game if that's the case, why not just change the formation? Why not asking Gabriel coming back on to, to form a back four? And then having Trussop playing on the left or in the middle, replacing uh replacing Kedia with somebody else or replacing Havis with in some somebody else, but changing the formation a little bit, trying to gain a little bit of momentum through a different formation. He didn't do that. Uh pretty much he kind of stick with, you know, the formation, the three one six and it actually, uh, it actually didn't go quite well in the last ten minutes. Of course, Awoyen, uh, Awoyenri, I think that's how you pronounce his name, score another one. But you got to give all the credits to Alanga, of course, uh, coming or joining from Manchester United. I still can't believe United decided to sell him for fifteen million. Uh, Alanga looks very good on the left hand side, but yeah, it was. Okay, we lost the goal through trans uh, the uh, transition. I think a lot, of, uh, a few players could be blamed. That Saka probably just kind of, you know, stopped the play by pulling, you know, pulling down Langa or even Declan Rice. But it was very exposed on the left hand side. Ben White could have probably uh, closed down Langa. I think at that moment, maybe trust I can cover for him and. Ramsdale was a little bit positional wise might be a little bit off but again from that close up range is really tough to blame Ramsdale but yeah it kind of ruined the Saturday morning a little bit a little bit I mean I will feel better if we score what if we, if we win 2 nothing compared to 2 1 I think we still having problems getting a clean sheet especially at home it's tough to honestly it's tough to watch I mean we are I don't remember I don't remember the last time where we won uh, an opening game at the Emirates shoot oh my god honestly the last time we might have probably won the opening game at the Emirates was 2017 2018. Uh, winning against Leicester 4-3. It was that game, like I said, like I said, scoring the first goal and Giroud with the last minute header. I think that could be the last game it happened. Yeah, I mean, ooh, wow. That's, what, six years ago. But, I, I mean, overall, we play we play well, but honestly, we're... I'm sure a lot of Arsenal fans are quite of a... Um, how do you call it? Like a, um, a perfectionist. 
a professionalist, perfectionist or something like that. We want it to be perfect, and unfortunately, today's game wasn't quite perfect at all. Arguably, first half was very perfect in a lot of ways, but the second half was completely uh, was completely unnecessary in certain play. But well, in the end, we 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 won it two one, and yeah, to uh, I think believe we were second after winning the game, but Newcastle winning or, or thrash Aston Villa. A couple of teams won as well. Arsenal sitting at fourth at the moment, but doesn't quite mean a lot of stuff um, at the moment. But yeah, let's do a uh, player rating. I don't do that s stuff quite a lot, but I'm sure. Uh, let's try to be a little bit, you know. In terms of the content, I want it to be a little bit fresh. And Rams, I'll give it a... Didn't really do much, to be honest. 8 out of 10, I believe so. Again, I can't really warn him a number uh, a 9. Maybe done a little bit better with the uh, with the goal. Ben, why well, give it an 8 as well. Solid. And, of course, the goal as well. Saliba, I'll give it... I'll give it an 8. How about that? I'll give it an 8. Um, yeah, I give it an eight for that. Um, was solid again. Uh, you can't really get past this guy. You and Timber, I, get, I give him a seven. It was quite quiet for him. Uh, won a few tackle, but I think eventually that seven kind of came from uh, the foul that he had, which I thought was not necessary because if he didn't commit that foul, I think he would still be okay. Thomas Potter, give it a seven. Um, I think there's something lacking in this game, kind of. I think every time when he gets triple passed, he, his recovery pace is kind of deteriorating or degenerating at the moment. But honestly, he still have a pretty solid game. Declan Rice, I give him 8. I think he has done quite uh, fantastically. Uh, got a few shots on target, actually. Uh, I believe the first one was pretty pretty much straight at uh matt turner the other one hit the post it would have been amazing to see him score from that position but in that um he the ability to win back the ball and beat him being a leader as well pointing fingers here and there in a good way uh showing where kai havoc should be standing timber should be standing martinelli should be standing and this guy seems like showing big big presence uh in his you know uh debut at the emirates uh, ooh, who else? Kai has to give it a seven. I don't think he's bad, but certainly would have done better in certain situations. I believe he won the most duels, aerial duels, ground duels. Uh, every time you know, every time he receives the ball, maybe there are a few times where I believe, I think, I, I think Bowley from 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 the other team lost the ball couldn't really rec uh, doesn't have the recovery pace on habits but certainly habits can certainly improve but right now we we are just waiting kai habits to you know click in that one game to to kind of like unlock all his uh goodness within this team Odegaard, give it a seven i think he has a pretty quiet game but orchestrating uh some of the play pretty well uh, but Kyle Saka give it a 9 uh, scoring that beautiful goal but other than that maybe should have done better in terms of the uh, the goal that we conceded maybe should have pulled Alanga down uh, Martinelli give it a 9 out of 10 uh, this guy has been electric every time he come on or every well every time when he played uh, it, he was just phenomenal just winning everything back uh, muscling everybody off Eddie I give it an 8 um, scoring a beautiful goal to start of the campaign Tommy has to give it an 8 as well solid defensively uh Gabriel oh I give it a 7 I mean he kind of did all right at or, or maybe give him an 8 no, I can't really warrant I can't really give him a, a rating for that unfortunately it's just uh not much going on I believe we only made two substitutions today is it no no no, no I don't think so crap who else do we make change Charles not coming on uh, uh, Gabriel coming on. That's it, right? Kivier didn't play. I can't think of one. <laughs> I can't think of. Uh, I can't think of. Uh, I can't think of any. I can't think of anybody coming on. Smith didn't come on. Vieira didn't come on. Well, I'm sure we only made two changes. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much the end of the first. Uh, uh, the first league of the season getting three points and right now we have to wait till next week next Monday actually which is well what eight days away it's a pain it's a painful wait but you know what at least Premier League is back so thank you guys for watching or listening hope you guys enjoyed this podcast do all the good stuff to the channel and I'll see you guys in the oh 
I almost messed up. Oh my God, I messed up my outro. I don't do that quite often. But I uh, hope you guys enjoy uh, the episode. Do all the good stuff to the episode or to the channel. And I'll see you guys in a bit.